So the Ryzen 5 processors are due to launch in about two weeks, but that's not gonna stop me from running my 1500X simulated benchmarks today. Let's go. So on April 11th, the Ryzen 5 processors will launch, including the Ryzen 5 1500X, which is a four core and eight thread part. It is the top four core eight thread part that AMD will offer in its Ryzen lineup. Now, if we consider core count, the 1500X's four cores and eight threads would put it up against Intel's i7 parts, which have the exact same core count and thread counts. But remember that Intel's i7 parts do maintain an IPC lead over AMD's parts, so that might not be a perfect comparison. Based on price point, the R5 1500X and its little brother, the 1400, will be going up against Intel's i5 parts. The benchmarks you're about to see put the 4790K at stock speeds, overclocked to 4.7 gigahertz. I'll throw in the 1800X overclocked to 4.04 gigahertz, and I'm simulating the 1500X at 4.04 gigahertz because I believe with the Spire cooler that it ships with, you should be able to get very near that based on the Ryzen architecture and what we've seen from other Ryzen parts. Now simulating my 1500X was as simple as diving into the BIOS of my motherboard and disabling half of my cores, leaving me with a four core, eight thread part, and it should be pretty much dead on with what we'll see from the 1500X. So with no further ado, let's hop into those benchmarks. So first up is the Heaven benchmark on the Extreme preset, and you'll notice that the Intel processors all squeak out a win over the AMD counterparts. However, they are all very, very close in their frame rates to each other. That shifts rapidly when you jump over to Grand Theft Auto on max settings at 1440p, where the Intel i7 easily comes away with the win over the AMD counterparts, the AMD parts within a frame of each other, and the 4790K gaining very little when it's overclocked there. Fallout 4 flips the opposite direction with the 1800X winning out over everyone else, but the 1500X very close and the i7 4790K coming in a distant third and fourth in this particular test. We see AMD repeat its win with Shadow of Mordor on ultra settings at 1440p. However, this time the margin is very narrow. And finally, Intel jumps back on top in Project Cars, also at 1440p ultra settings. However, this game is clearly bottlenecked more by the GPU than is the CPU. All the processors came in within a single frame of each other. Jumping over to synthetic benchmarks, Cinebench obviously gives the clear win to the 1800X in multi-threaded performance. However, the Intel parts do win in single-threaded performance. Interestingly, the 1500X, though, stays very close to the i7 4790K, which is overclocked to 4.7 GHz versus the 4.04 GHz on the 1500X. CPU-Z comes out flipped this time, where the AMD parts have a higher single-threaded score, and that gives the 1500X the narrow victory over the 4790K overclocked with a score of 10,535 versus 9,039. And finally, we go to the Fire Strike Extreme Benchmark, the physics score. The 1800X runs away with it. However, again, the 1500X narrowly beats out the 4790K with a score of 13,380 to 13,307. Now, it's worth noting on the Ryzen system that those gaming benchmarks were ran at 2933 MHz on the memory, and it was 16 gigabytes of memory across the board, whether it be the 4790K or the Ryzen parts. And recently, it's starting to look like Ryzen really does love faster memory. So if at all possible, if you're building a Ryzen system, go for the faster memory speed. You should see at least a little bit of a performance gain, and you may thank yourself later. Now, as we saw in the benchmarks, some games just are not playing all that well with Ryzen. GTA 5, for example, just is a pooch on Ryzen versus its Intel counterparts. That being said, other games seem to favor Ryzen a little bit more than at least the older Haswell architecture from Intel. Both Fallout 4 and Shadow of Mordor were big time favorites of the Ryzen architecture versus Haswell, and that at least sets the Ryzen parts up well against the modern equivalents in the Skylake or KB Lake SKUs from Intel in some of those games. 
In addition, as game developers continue to optimize their games for Ryzen processors, we should see minor performance gains or maybe even major performance gains as time moves along. It's one of those things where you're sort of betting on the Ryzen processors getting better over time compared to the Intel parts if you decide to go that route. Now from a price perspective, the Ryzen 5 1500X is competing against the very high tiered i3s from Intel and the lower tier tiered i5s. The 1500X, however, does enjoy a couple benefits. It is a full $50 cheaper than the 7600K, and it's unlocked, which should give it a leg up on the other i5s in its price range because it will actually end up running at a higher clock speed than those other i5s. In addition, the Spire Cooler has brought the 1700s from AMD up to near 4.0 GHz or 3.9 GHz, and that's the cooler that ships with the 1500X. So if I were you and I was building a new gaming computer in the near future, I would give the Ryzen 1500X a very, very close look. The performance looks like it's there, or at least very near what Intel's offering, and it's doing it at a much lower price point. So I think, and fingers crossed on this, AMD has a winner with the 1500X. I don't know about you guys, but I am super curious to see if these benchmarks are anywhere near what the real thing turns out to be. My suspicion is that they will be very close. If you like this video, give me a like down below, share, subscribe, all those things are super helpful. You can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. I'm a super social dude. And of course, let's let YouTube go ahead and queue up a couple more videos from my channel. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.